Egus. Scene 14. Hello, Mr. Strang. I was just passing. I hope it's not too late. Of course not. I'm delighted to see you. My wife doesn't know I'm here. I'd be grateful to you if you didn't lie to her, if you receive my meaning. Everything that happens in this room is confidential, Mr. Strang. I hope so. I hope so. Do you have something to tell me? As a matter of fact, I have, yes. Your wife told me about a photograph. I know. It's not that. It's about that, but it's worse. I wanted to tell you the other night, but I couldn't in front of Dora. Maybe I should have. It might be show her where all the, that stuff leads to. She drills into the boy behind my back. What kind of thing is it? Something. I witnessed. Where? At home, about 18 months ago. Go on. It was late. I'd gone upstairs to fetch something. The boy had been in bed hours, or so I thought. Go on. As I came along the passage, I saw the door of his bedroom was ajar. I'm sure he didn't know what it was. From inside, I heard the sound of his chanting. Chanting? Like the Bible. One of those lists his mother always reading to him. What kind of list? Those begats. So and so begat. You know, genealogy. Can you remember what Alan's list sounded like? Well, the sort of thing. I stood there absolutely astonished. The first word I hear was... Prince! Prince! Prince begat Prince. That sort of nonsense. And Prince begat Prankus. And Prankus begat Flacus. I looked through the door. And he was standing in the moonlight in his pyjamas. Right in front of a big photograph. The horse with the huge eyes? Right. Flancus begat Spankus. And Spankus begat Spankus the Great. Who lived three score years. It was all like that. I can't remember the exact names, of course. Then he suddenly knelt down. In front of the photograph? Yes, right there at the foot of his bed. And Liquus began Nequus. And Nequus begat Fliquus, the king of spit. And Fliquus spoke out of his chinkle-chankle. What? I'm sure that was the word. I never forgotten it. Chinkle-chankle. And he said, Behold, I give you Equus, my only begotten son. Equus? Yes, no doubt of that. He repeated that word several times. Equus, my begotten son. Equus. Ek. Ek. And then? Yes. What? He took a piece of string out of his pocket, made up into a noose, and put it in his mouth. And then, and then, with his other hand he picked up a coat hanger, a wooden coat hanger, and, and... Began to beat himself. You see, why I couldn't tell his mother, religion. Religion's at the bottom of all this. What did you do? Nothing. I coughed and went back downstairs. Did you ever speak to him about it later, even obliquely? I can't speak of things like that, doctor. It's not my nature. No, I see that. But I thought you ought to know, so I came. Yes, I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Well, that's it. Is there anything else? There is, actually. One thing. What's that? On the night that he did it, that awful thing in the stable. Yes? That very night, he was out with a girl. How do you know that? I just know. Did he tell you? I can't say it anymore. I don't quite understand. Everything said here is confidential, you said. Absolutely. Then ask him. Ask him about taking a girl out. That very night he did it. And... Goodbye, doctor.